Hi everyone, this is Mr. Herbst here, and this is the anatomy of the eye. In this video, we're going to talk about what causes that red eye, that eerie looking red eye that you see sometimes in, in photos. We're also going to go into the parts and the functions of the eye, as well as why do we see an eye doctor? Why do we spend all that time seeing an eye doctor? First off, uh, some anatomy of the eye, the sclera. That is the white part of the eye. So uh, that, when we think of the eye, that is primarily the part of the eye that we that we think of. That would be this part right here, the white part of the eye. That provides structure, support, and protection to the eye. It's a very thick. Uh, it's a very thick tissue that helps to su supply structure to the eye. So that's the outermost covering of the eye. So on my blank eye diagram right here, I wrote in sclera, that is the outermost covering of the eye. Next we have the iris, that is the pigmented part of the eye. Uh, pigment means color, and so thus the iris is what gives the eye its color. In this case right here, this person here has blue eyes. Um, that is the iris right here, all of this blue stuff right here. In my blank eye diagram, that would be this region right here that... Um, it's hard to tell, but it is this it is this region right here that that sticks out a little bit. That is the iris. It's a, it's a muscular organ and it has the ability to stretch and contract and it controls this little opening right here. In my next slide I'll talk about what that opening is. That opening is the pupil. That's like a, think of that as sort of like a hole in your eye. Uh, that supplies that allows light to go in and out of your eye. It dilates and contracts based on how light, uh, how bright it is outside or inside. So the pupil is this region right here on this person. And on my blank eye diagram, that is, is this opening right here. It's, uh, you, you know, it's not actually a real structure. It's just an opening. Um, it, it is controlled by how close together the iris is so this right here is part of the iris so all this blue stuff here will contract or dilate and based on how big the opening is that's in the middle of the of the iris is the pupil uh, the pupil is uh, now why you, you may wonder why is it black it's black because no light comes back to us from from the pupil uh, the pupil it, it, all the light that goes into the pupil is absorbed by the eye. Our next structure here is the cornea. Uh, the cornea is like a clear covering on the front of the eye, otherwise known as the anterior side of the eye. That is the frontmost portion of the eye. It helps to focus light into the eye. Um, so it's hard to tell on this diagram here, but, but the, the outer covering of the eye is the, is the cornea. On this blank eye diagram right here, uh, the outermost covering is the cornea. So that, that has the ability to bend a little bit and change shape and helps to focus light into the eye. It's a very thin, clear covering that helps to get light into the eye. Um, it's also possible to scratch the cornea. However, it's one of the most fastest healing portions of your body. So... Uh, actually, if you if somebody was to scratch the cornea, it would heal pretty fast within probably within 24 hours. Actually, uh, we have two types of fluid in our eye. We have aqueous humor, and then we also have vitreous humor. Um, aqueous humor is uh, a gel-like fluid that's between the corneas, cornea and the iris. So right here, we have this fluid called aqueous humor. In some textbooks, um, they just abbreviate aqueous humor as aqueous gel or possibly aqueous, uh, aqueous fluid. Um, it basically, all that does is help to maintain pressure inside of the eye. If we didn't have any pressure inside of the eye, our eye would be like a little sack flopping around all over the place. And uh, that wouldn't be very good. So we need some liquid inside to help give support and structure to that eye. Then we have the vitreous humor. Uh, that is the gel-like fluid in the central region of the eye. Very similar to aqueous fluid, just in a different place. So that's in the center of our eye. Again, in some textbooks, they call it the vitreous gel or possibly the, the vitreous fluid. 
but just know that that's the fluid that that takes up the majority of our eye right here. It it helps to the pressure from the vitreous humor gives the eye support. Then we have the lens. The lens is a very hard structure that acts very similar to a magnifying lens or the, the lens of a microscope. That's this structure right here. It will take in light and bend it so that it, the image is projected properly into our eye. So that hard structure is the lens. It's, it's shaped actually like a lens. It bends light uh, the way that we want it to be. The older you get, the worse of this structure has the ability to focus light. That's because it begins to harden um, after a certain age, around age 40, 50. Uh, this, this structure here can't, har can't uh, bend and move as much as it used to be able to. So people uh, that are upper in the upper ages of their life uh, have the inability to focus on objects as well as younger people. Next we have the ciliary body. That's a type of muscle. The ciliary bodies uh, actually attach to the lens. Uh, those are those that would be like right here. Those are muscles that control the shape of the lens and thus helps to focus light in or out. Uh, you can actually you can actually use these muscles, the ciliary body muscles, pretty easily. If you look at your finger. Uh, it holds your finger close to your face and look at it. Um, then look past your finger on the wall behind your finger. Your finger will become out of focus and the wall will become in focus. Then look back at your finger and your finger will become in focus and the wall behind you will become out of focus. Basically when you do that you are changing the shape of the lens by fractions of a millimeter but it's enough to actually make the lens focus light in a different way. Our next structure we have is the optic disc. That's this region right here. That is actually where the, the area that's responsible for picking up the light or the image that we see. So the optic disc will be the area responsible for pick, picking up the light that we see. That, that's not to say, though, however, that light enters that region right there. It actually doesn't. Light is going to enter straight back and be projected onto the back of our eye right here. Uh, the optic disc is just the area responsible for picking up that image that we see. The optic nerve is a nerve that, that uh, right here behind our eye that will send a message to the visual cortex part of our brain. So uh, it's the nerve that will send... Uh, an image or an impulse to our brain so that it can be processed. The next structure I want to talk about here is the retina. Uh, the retina is, it, it's a tissue that sort of acts like a mirror and it directs light over to the optic disc. So the retina, which is, which is in black right here, Think of it sort of like a funnel. It's going to funnel the image that you see all the way to the optic disc right here. So anything that is projected into the eye will be funneled to the optic disc thanks to the retina. The retina, the retina has actually some, uh, some very reflective tissues that help to reflect light, and it will funnel that image over to the optic disc right here. The macula. The macula is not really a real structure. But it is this region right here. Again, a couple slides ago, I talked about how the image is projected to the back of the eye. Um, that is the region where the image is actually projected. That is called the macula. It's, it's actually part of the retina itself, but it is where the image is actually being projected. Again, the retina is going to funnel that image over to the optic disc. So it's going to funnel that image over here so that it can be processed by the brain. But actually the place where the macula, or, or where the image actually hits is the macula. And then the actual place where all the light is, is focused is called the fovea, fovea centralis. So the actual place where the light is, is its most focused would be a very small portion of the eye, but it's actually where all the, all the image is actually focused. Now why do we go to the eye doctor? I know it takes a while to go to the doctor. It's kind of a pain in the butt. 
but they have the, the they can detect diseases that you would never would notice and thus can they can diagnose your overall health uh, they can detect diseases that you never would have thought of here we have a healthy retina when you go to the eye doctor they are actually looking at the back of your eye believe it or not um, all of these little things right here these are these are uh, arteries and veins um, so they're actually looking at the back of your eye. They're looking into your eye and looking at the back of your eye. Here we have our macula. This is, this is where the image is projected and where the image is focused on. That's our fovea centralis right here. This region right here off to the side, that is our optic disc. So the retina is going to funnel funnel all the image into that red, that optic disc right there. So this is a healthy eye. This is what an eye should look like. You have some healthy blood vessels here. Uh, you, ha this, you have some healthy color, a nice healthy red color. This is a disease retina right here. Um, all of the, this stuff right here, this is probably uh, it popped blood vessels. Um, the You can see that the, the blood vessels don't look as healthy. You have some white regions right here. This is probably where the, re the retina lost some of its, um, its functions. Uh, this, this right here, all these popped bloody regions, this is probably caused by high blood pressure. If you increase the blood pressure inside of a, a small artery like this, it will probably actually explode. It's like putting too much pressure inside of a hose. Uh, you put too much water pressure inside of a hose, of course it's going to explode. So... Um, high blood pressure can contribute to diseases like this. Uh, this guy right here probably is not seeing so well. Uh, he probably can see a little bit because the image, the, the macula where the image is projected is, is still fairly intact. Uh, this right here is the macula. And this region right here is intact pretty decently. So this person probably can see pretty well, but it can get a lot worse than this. And so going to the eye doctor regularly once a year, they have the ability to diagnose diseases that you never would have thought. Uh, this could also be caused by diabetes. What causes red eye? Well, when you take a, it's all happened to us before, but when you take a photo with a camera, the flash is actually so bright that yeah, the, some of the light reflects off of the retina and back into the camera. So the reason that this guy's eye right here is so red is because the back of his eyeball, the retina, is a nice red, pinkish, healthy color due to all the blood back there all the little blood vessels back there. So uh, the flash is so bright that it's going to actually go into the retina and be bounce, and, and the light is going to bounce back off of the retina and back into the camera. So uh, that's actually what causes red eye. Anyway, this is, uh, this is ending the, the anatomy of the eye. Again, this was Mr. Herbst, and I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.